Hey, Wrangler 4xE fans. I'm driving along thinking about a post I saw in the Wrangler 4xE Facebook group just a little while ago. And somebody posted, uh, curious what other people's miles per gallon were in the Wrangler 4xE and asked if anybody else was achieving the 50 miles per gallon equivalent that had been advertised. Now, so I, I want to talk about the difference between MPG and MPGE. This is something I've talked about a lot in previous posts in the Facebook group and on YouTube about the difference between MPG and MPGE. And if you don't understand the difference, do not feel bad because major automotive publications have gotten this wrong about the Wrangler 4xE since the first releases were coming out. There were some major, I won't name them, but there were some major ones that were putting out that the Wrangler 4xE achieved 50 miles to the gallon because they didn't understand what MPGE is because it's a horribly confusing thing to understand. And it was created, the whole idea behind MPGE, one, it only applies to electrified propulsion. Well, I shouldn't say that. If you go to Wikipedia and you look at MPGE, you search MPGE, you can see that it actually applies to a lot of different types of alternative fuel vehicles as a way to compare them to what we're used to. We're used to internal combustion engines. We're used to hearing if a vehicle gets 15 miles a gallon, we know that's horrible. If a vehicle gets 45 miles a gallon, we know that's pretty awesome. So the EPA, or I, I think it was another body, another governing body involved with this, came up with MPGE as a way to compare internal combustion engines to other alternative fuel vehicles. If you go to the Wikipedia and search MPGE, you can see there are all sorts of different types of propulsion systems that are listed there, and there are formulas that show you how to do it. So MPGE, as it applies to electrified propulsion, takes something like a gallon of gas and the electrical energy that can be achieved from that gallon of gas. Now, how does that work? We can't compare gallons to miles per kilowatt hour. You know, we can't do those kind of things. So the formulas come back and, and line things up. It's like the common denominator when you were taking, you know, taking math in school, you had to get a common denominator. You have to have a common denominator when you compare gas vehicles to electrified vehicles. And so MPGE attempts to do that. It uses a formula that gets you there. So when Jeep came out and said it, they, you know, Jeep wanted to rate it at 50 MPGE, and the EPA said, no, nah, it's 49 MPGE. That, to the consumer, looks like a pretty impressive number, right? A lot of us look at that and say, mm, that, wow, that's pretty impressive because, you know, my my car that I currently drive only gets 30 miles a gallon and this looks like it's going to get 49. Uh, no, not really. And here's the problem. I don't, I'm going to be a little critical of Jeep and obviously I'm not that critical because I'm driving one of their products, but I'm going to be a little bit critical of Jeep of using that as a marketing tool because it kind of took advantage of people's lack of knowledge of electrified propulsion systems. Those of us who have geeked out over EVs and plug-in hybrids over the past few years know that when we see 49 MPGE, we kind of go, well, that's pretty lame, but kind of what I would expect from a Jeep Wrangler. And the reason I say that's pretty lame, a Tesla Model 3 is rated at like 141 MPGE. I had a, uh, a smart electric drive, you know, the little two-seater 4.2 uh, tiny little cars. I had one of those for a few years that was rated at uh, 107 MPGE. I think the uh, Nissan Leaf, which at one time was the world's largest selling electric vehicle before Tesla got crazy, um, it was rated at like 100, and, I don't know if it's rated at like 130 MPGE. So you can see by comparison that as an electrified vehicle, 49 MPG is actually pretty lame, but it's what we would expect out of a 5,000 pound four wheel drive, body on frame, axle, brick of a vehicle going through the air with a horrible drag coefficient that the Jeep Wrangler has, we would expect something like 49 MPGE. But to the average consumer that doesn't understand the difference between MPGE and MPG, we look at that and go, oh, that's pretty impressive. So I, I'd say not to feel bad. Uh, you know, some major publications got it wrong. Some uh, automotive uh, YouTube bloggers got it wrong. And they were touting that this vehicle was going to get, um, uh, as is the title of one particular automotive um, manu or automotive outlet that wrote an article, they said, hey, this Jeep Wrangler is going to get Prius-like MPGs. That was the title of their article. 
and I wrote the guy. I said, I, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful, and I don't want to be one of those people that knows it all, but your, your title and your article are very misleading because you're not communicating what MPGE is. Now, what I said behind my hand was because you don't know what you're talking about, but I, I wanted to be kind about that, and I introduced him to what MPGE was. Well, he wrote back to me arguing... And I wrote back to this person who had a couple decades of automotive blogging and writing articles, and I said, what kind of miracle of engineering would it take for a 5,000 pound vehicle with a drag coefficient of a dump truck to get 50 miles to the gallon? And have you thought about that? And he wrote me back and he finally agreed. He finally realized, oh, I, you're right. There's no way Jeep is going to be able to get 50 miles to the gallon out of a Wrangler. That's just, it's an impossibility unless you, ripped all the insides out and, and gave it a two-wheel drive and you know made it super light and leaned this windshield back and fixed that grill, that, there's no way you're ever gonna get 50 miles a gallon out of the Wrangler. It's just, the laws of physics and thermodynamics stay consistent from manufacturer to manufacturer, so there's just no way that they're gonna achieve that. Now, let's step into part B of this video. There are ways of making, if you go to screen five on the dash, if you take your left up and, arrow, up and down arrow buttons on the steering wheel and you go up and down through the screen, you will see one that gives you an MPG, or an MPG rating, not MPGE, MPG, miles per gallon. That gauge is slightly misleading because Jeep has not given this vehicle any way to measure miles per kilowatt. It's only measuring the miles you travel and the gas you use. The problem with that is some of those miles you travel can be under electric only conditions, but that's still going into that math. It's still going into that calculator. So on that gauge, some of us are going to be able to have 40 and 50 and 60 miles per gallon show up there because our daily commute is short enough that we're keeping this thing in electric mode all the time. I have an eight mile drive to work, eight mile drive home. If I don't go anywhere and venture out anywhere, I can go three and four days without using the gas engine. One fill up, I, I track all my fill ups and fuel aid. One of my fill ups, I got 83 miles to the gallon. I know that that's not a real number, that that is a number that is mixed between my gas and electric use. And it only looks that high because it was measuring all my electric miles. And I've had on my screen here, at one point, I had it at 43 miles the gallon. I mean, like that was my average for a long time. I just took a 4,500 mile road trip out to Colorado. So I will not see that in a long time. It will take me a long time to, to build that number back up. And it takes a while. But, um, so I just wanted to kind of talk about that. I wanted to share that again. Uh, to try to keep that at the top of our conversation because I know one thing that's happening now is people are coming into the group and going to the YouTube channel, checking things out and, and trying to understand this vehicle and people who have never messed with plug-in hybrids before, never met, messed with electrified platforms before, are coming to the YouTube channel and coming to our uh, Facebook group. And so I just wanna keep this conversation at the top. If you have been around a while and you hear me say this a lot, I do apologize, but I think it's important because I'm getting occasional messages. Uh, I just got one, I think it was week before last. Somebody bought one of these Wrangler 4 bys thinking it was going to get that kind of gas mileage. And all of a sudden he's like, whoa. And he had like a hundred and hundred some mile drive to work. I mean, he was putting in some serious miles and he's going, hey, I'm only at the like 23, 24 rate. What's going on here? And then, you know, once I explained it to him, he's putting this Wrangler 4 by e up for sale. So. I just want to keep this conversation at the top of our uh, top of our YouTube channel and at the top of the Facebook group. So hopefully we help somebody, which is the point of this whole group. I'm all, the point of this whole effort. We help somebody you know, make a good decision about buying the uh, Wrangler 4xe. So there we go. Thanks for watching.